But now we continue the complete Ripley. Radio 4's season of all the Ripley novels by Patricia Highsmith. Ripley's Game, starring Ian Hart as Highsmith's clever, amoral anti-hero. And today, Tom sets up a man he dislikes to carry out two perfect murders, but her an attack of conscience propels him onto a train to take on the Mafia. Ripley's Game, dramatised for radio by Alan MacDonald. Come on, Reeves, there's no such thing as a perfect murder. It's just a parlor game. Sure, but all the same. Six o'clock, what do you say to a drink? Madame Annette. No, Tom, wait. You know a lot of respectable people. People who are above reproach. Hey, can anyone truly say that? People with no connection to these new mafia hoodlums in Hamburg who deserve to be dealt with. So the hoodlums you know can make a nice little profit? The guys I know are a decent bunch, Tom. For crooks. <laughs> they are. Gambling, soft drugs, no violence. Compared to the mafia who have muscled in on their patch. I understand, Reeves. Whatever class of crooks you're talking about, you need... Someone above reproach to deal with the Mafia, right? Tom, hey, you still owe me a favor for that Durwatt passport I fixed for you. You sure you don't know someone? Sure. Sure, I'm sure. I'm ready for that drink now, Tom. I do know someone, of course. No rush to tell Reeves about him, though. The rude Englishman at the party last week comes into my mind. <laughs> Elwaz is deep in conversation with one of her shopping friends, so I circulate. I spy a tall, blonde Englishman, sort of Dutch-looking, rather striking in appearance. He has a shop, yes, a picture frame as I never quite got into. A rather down-at-heel place. I don't know, you'll have to ask Simone about that. I'm hopeless with the French names. Hi there. Hello. Um... Tom Ripley, I was wondering if you and your wife might... Ah, yes, I've heard of you. Mixed up with that American who went missing, weren't you? I did have a visitor last year Yes, I'm busy, Ripley. Simone, darling, Madame Creveur was asking... What a very rude man. Or so I said to Gautier later after a glass or two more. Mais non, Monsieur Ripley, he does not mean to be unfriendly. He is depressed, I believe. He has some kind of blood disease, you know. Not cancer, but... Listen me here, je... Leukemia. C'est ça. Myeloid leukemia. Serious, I think. And this business does not go so well. Giovanni's shop is on the Rue de Sablon, in Fontainebleau, 20 kilometers away, in need of paint. There he is, slapping a length of frame in his hand, talking, distinct but not distinguished. Rude man. Stroll by, Tom. Round the corner, Gautier sells art supplies. It's a game, that's all. It's a game to play with a rude man against the Mafia. Gautier is one of the pieces. His right eye is made of glass. I remind myself to stare at the left. That's everything, thank you. You begin something new? Yes, that portrait I was doing is ready for framing. Perhaps I should go to see Mr. Trevani. Although, well, perhaps not. Why not? Well, I did hear his illness is much worse. Ah, oh, sad. Yes, I understand. He I understand he only has a few more months to live. And he has a wife and a young son, so he might be willing to take on a dangerous job to earn some money now. Do I have to tell you, dear Reeves, that if you do contact him, you should give another name besides your own? I only go to Fontainebleau every two weeks or so as a rule. But I want to see the house where Trevani lives. Rue Saint-Marie. Narrow, cramped looking. Limp curtains and sparkling green windows. Here's the mother, Simone. George! Yes. George! Ici, immediately. <sighs> Sherry! I bought some beautiful cakes and... Oh, I'm interrupting. I'm no, no, the picture is finished. It is winter light. Now it is all wrong. Here. I write down... You've written down what? A man called uh, Wister telephoned. No message. It seems like Jonathan Trevani may be taking the bait. 
Hello? Wister speaking. Reeves, you old scoundrel. Is there a problem? I thought... He said yes, then I came here, and he says no. So what am I supposed to do? We agreed you wouldn't call. I thought I had him. Now, even if he comes, I won't trust him. Tell me what you're up to. It's so simple. The target gets off the U-Bahn at Steinstrasse at the same time every night. I don't want to know, Reeves. Just tell me the story so far. Trevani said yes. Even when I got here, he said yes. Then overnight... You don't know someone else, Tom. He's your man, Reeves. What next? Tomorrow, he will get a letter inviting him to Hamburg for a medical examination. On the level? On the level. Especially. But... But... But maybe the doc can be influenced, owing to a bad heroin habit of his wife's. If Trevani comes, maybe the prognosis should be worse than expected. What do I owe Reeves? Nothing. He gets me a passport and another name from time to time. I do him a favor in return from time to time. But I've sent Trevani on this trail. He must be truly desperate if he's thinking of taking Reeves' bait. Well, he's certainly gone somewhere. His shop is closed. Fermature pour hasard pour raisons de famille. Sure, family reasons. The next thing I know, I'm in Hamburg. It's so simple. The target gets off the U-Bahn at Steinstrasse at the same time every night. I spot him the second night, the Italian. Gray top coat, brown leather buttons, gray Hamburg, dapper. In no hurry, no mind it with him though. But I spot the Italian because I spot Reeves' man, Fritz, following. I met him once, small, square, and a cap. Isn't he too obvious? Papa insists because you are away that I must come for dinner and... And are there any messages I was? Oh, nothing. No, no, one. Uh, your friend, uh, Reeves, he says his problem is soon to be solved. You understand? I understand. The dapper Italian man in gray and brown travels home unconcerned about anything very much. And among the crowd, a man he doesn't even see. A tall, pale, thin man takes something out of his inside pocket and... The gun discarded by a gloved hand. He walks calmly away. Jonathan Trevani, just another man who doesn't understand what the fuss is all about. When I'm home, I read about it in Madame Annette's rag of a newspaper. Killing in Hamburg. Salvatore Bianca, 48. Known to be of the Di Stefano family of Milano. Murderer unknown. There is a problem with uh, zinc white, Monsieur Rippy. No, no, only that I realized I needed titanium for the particular effect I was after. Pour l'effet spécial. Ah, I see. You have seen our friend, Monsieur Trevani? I'm just on my way there, actually. Is he well? Hello. At first, that story you hear, it seems it is not true. Oh, I am. I'm glad to hear but that. But now his wife tells their... Oh, the, uh, the woman, the femme qui... Uh, cleaner? The cleaner. Who tells my wife you understand the story? A specialist in Hamburg tells Monsieur Trevani news not so good. Elwaz doesn't know, but I've kept her picture of the garden in winter light. For Trevani to frame. In his shop, he declines my suggestion of dinner at Belhomme. But there's a willingness behind his eyes. Instead, he joins me around the corner for a beer... Our hands accidentally touch when we raise our glasses. <laughs> so tell me, well, what brought you to France, Jonathan? Oh, uh, an adventure with a friend, buying and selling things. I've been struggling to get anywhere as an actor. Mm, I can see you as a romantic lead. Oh, me too. But not casting directors, alas. So I learned something about the antique business. And He's one of those Englishmen who seems quite unaware how how striking he is. Perhaps the illness emphasizes his high cheekbones. I buys another beer, for he seems to be short of change. And now there's Georges, of course, and the business, even though that's not exactly booming. So here I am. And how about you? How did you happen to come to France? Oh, my wife likes it here, and, and so do I. I can't think of a more pleasant life, really. One hears of you encountering occasional unpleasantness. 
I think you might have mentioned that before. Uh, really? Well... Do you happen to know an American called Reeves Minor? Can't say I do. Mm, rather a desperate man. Sometimes goes under the name of Wister. No. Lives here in Fontainebleau, does he? No. Uh, but he travels a lot, I think. Nope. Don't know the name. Names. Mm. Yeah, I'd better push off. My wife's expecting me. Thanks for the beer. A pleasure. He always knew there had to be another job. But he never said yes to it, Reeves. Look, I think he's guessed that we're acquainted. Well, that might help, Tom. You see, it has to be with a garage. With a... On a train. Uh, wait a moment, will you, while I close the door? Reeves always has a plan. But I can imagine Jonathan's distaste. The garrot. The touch of the other's warm neck. Reeves, what's wrong with another shooting? No, you see, the man will be taking this train to Strasbourg. And the way I see it... Look, it's only a hunch, but I think you should try again with him. I suspect he's a rather desperate man. Is he coming over? Thursday, I hope. A second medical opinion. And more money, of course. Give him a choice of gun and, um... The other thing. But advise him not to use the gun. You think he might still come around, eh? Tom, it's time we were going to <laughs> well, shop. Mon uh, Look, I have to sign off. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Reeves. A second medical opinion. Translated for Jonathan, who doesn't speak German, by a pretty nurse. The specialist regrets to inform you. I know Reeves. He tells me things when I ask. Who the guy on the train will be. Vito Marcangelo. About 5'6". Gray hair. Marcangelo has two bodyguards. They're all in the next carriage. Jonathan is between carriages, waiting. I know him a little now. He believes he has the nerve. The nerve of a desperate man. But this may be a step too far. Jonathan! What are you doing here? I thought you might need a hand. So... You flew to Hamburg to... Give me the thing, would you? The Schweizerwagen is here, yeah? Uh, next. It's the next carriage. Oh, thank you, sir. Bitte. What is it you want? A string. Let me have it. Stay there. I might need you. He's gone white as a sheet. He can't do it. The garrote isn't even through its loop. He doesn't feel it. How easily a mafia hoodlum that needs to be dealt with can be flushed away. No sign of them. We may have to wait till Strasbourg. Can I help you, madam? Thank you, sir. Bitte. But I hope not. You're okay, aren't you? Fine, fine. He's coming. He's... I I'll get him in the bathroom. You knock twice when the coast is clear. He's on his own. When shall I? Now. Now! <laughs> The nylon disappears into his neck. I pull tighter, tighter. His teeth, his expensive mafia teeth fall out. Here, let's get rid of him. He slides down the wall, his ugly mouth gaping open, a compliant corpse. Look out, there's a... Oh. I'm sorry, madam, I'm a friend of mine is being sick. Okay, give me a hand. Another one's coming. One of the Italians. No, no, no problem. Can you bash him uh, with the gun after I hit him? I'll, yes, I'll. Uh, look, as if your life depends on it, maybe it does. <laughs> the, the door. Okay, okay, okay. There. And, and now for the other one. What's the corridor? Just as clear. Grab his legs, will you? One, one, two, three. Yes! Ah, Monsieur Tom. Vous voulez encore du café? No, no, thank you. Just your newspaper, please. Ah, mes chevaux. Voici. Missy. She knows I don't bet, but it's a polite fiction between us. 
so I can read her rag of a newspaper, which mentions at the bottom of page one the garroting on a train of an Italian, Vito Marcangelo, 52, of Milan. But it also mentions... Ah. Uh, so I'll ring Jonathan on some pretext. Hi, J Jonathan, it's me, Tom. I'm sorry to call. But... Yeah, if, if it's about the uh, picture I'm framing for you, it'll be ready. N no, can. it isn't. We need to take a quiet drive somewhere. Here, read it for yourself. Bit of outline in red. Filippo Tiroli, 31, suffering concussion, a broken arm that might need amputation, broken ribs. Signor Tiroli is in a coma, but hell. Gravely wounded. He's not dead. He's going to be able to describe. Only if he comes around. And then, what's to connect us to something that happened on a train to Strasbourg? I mean, I think we did a rather good job. Just Reeves? As far as I can tell. I hope he's not being sticky about the money. He ought to come up with all of it right away. He ought to, yes. Probably thinking that I want some of the, um, 40,000 pounds, is it? But, but I don't. Huh? Frankly, I was thinking you wanted some. Yes, I mean, why else would you be on the train? Because it was a pleasure. And to help you with a little money. How are you explaining that to Simone? I've told her the German doctors paid me for a trial of a new treatment. But that isn't going to be enough. I have to try and think of something else. A long-lost cousin in England has died. I've thought of that. But frankly, there isn't anybody. A fictitious relative would be easy enough, but he's not used to lying. Best not to press him. There's something else on his mind. Monsieur Gautier feels embarrassed now. That he passed on a story about how I was on my last legs. I gather that story began with you. And reached the ears of Monsieur Wister alias Reeves. <clears throat> yeah, but... But what? But after that, you had a choice, didn't you? You could have said no to Reeves' idea. So how did you come to pick on me? Oh, for a petty reason. I'm sorry. At that party in February, you stood out in the crowd. And you said, yes, I've heard of you in a rather nasty way. Did I? Ripley, I'm busy. Ah. My schooling's to blame for that. Using your last name. I was tired that day, though. I get so tired, Tom. Look. It's all right now. There's nothing I want from you. Not even friendship. Because that'd be dangerous. You could just as well say something against me as I against you. I mean, think of it that way. True. If there's one thing I'd like to do, it's protect you. <laughs> no, really. You won't have to see me again. The job has been a success. I won't take you all the way to the door. Uh, anywhere here. Before the houses. Uh, try to get a friend to pick up my picture. As you like. It happened near enough to home for our friends to be talking about it, and before I can get there, the it's on the world service. In other news, there's been a new development in the case of the murder of an Italian man on the Hamburg-Strasbourg train. An apparent survivor of the attack, Vincent Toroli, 31, of Milan, has regained consciousness, though it is not yet clear whether he has been able to assist investigators. He won't tell the police anything, if he's capable of speech, but his family will tell them. Perhaps they already know about about the man in his 30s with brown hair, a little over average height, who socked him in the jaw and the stomach, and another man behind him who might have been tall and blonde. They certainly know enough for Reeves to interrupt my Sunday. My flat in Hamburg. It was bombed today. My God. I'm ringing you from Amsterdam. Were you hurt? I happen to be out. It's a miracle. The people below heard a car, then two minutes later, an explosion. Reeves, look, 
How much are they on to you? I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe they got something out of Fritz. Because he failed to keep a date with me today. I sure hope he's okay. But he doesn't know, you know, our friend's name. Or where he lives. So I think our plan has essentially worked. Good old optimistic Reeves. Bombed out of house and home. But the plan has worked. The money, he says, is on its way. At the concert that night, I see Jonathan and his wife up in the more exalted seats. Paradis, they call them. I see his wife looking at me as I glance their way. And in the interval, we almost meet. There's Gautier turning from some silky words to Elwaz to murmur some rather similar silky words to Jonathan's wife, Simone. You are truly an embellishment to the company. This she embellishes the frown she'd been pointing at me with a thick smile for Gautier's good eye. Okay, maybe this isn't the time for good news about money. Tomorrow I have a new toy for Elwaz to collect from Fontainebleau. A fine excuse to disregard my promise not to see Jonathan. So, I ask for the picture, too. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I had to stretch it a little taller than I'd initially it's thought. It's great. It's fine. What do I owe you? Uh, 90 francs. I'll wrap it. Is everything all right? Since you ask, my wife spoke to Gautier. He didn't tell her that you started that story about my demise. But Simone seems to have guessed it. And what did you say to her? What I've said from the start, that Gautier always refused to tell me who started the story, which is true. Well, keep cool. If you don't see each other... She read the story about... about the Mafia killing and associated it with the train I might have been on. Then she asked me what connection you had with the German doctors. Which is none, Jonathan. She somehow associates you with the money we've got now. You see? Uh, that last payment came through. I haven't told her about it yet. I haven't come up with an explanation. She wanted to know how I could afford the new sofa I bought us. And I went and bought the gyroscope for George. We've been short of money for so long now that I couldn't resist. He can't find the lies, can he? If the reclusive relative dying in deepest Hampshire won't do, I shall have to think of something else for him. But don't we all need to enjoy a little extravagance after crime? I'm so pleased that Waz enjoys the new harpsichord. Oh, don't stop, Cherie. That, that was lovely. Is it part of a concerto? No, it's one of his solo pieces. But I must tell you... Do play me some more. A man we know. He sells the paint in Fontainebleau. Gaudio? Gautier? Hmm. Madame Delatre told me. You know she is the wife of the plumber, and he... What's happened to Gautier? He is dead. A car. Hit and run. Just bad luck. A coincidence. It happens to people. An accident. Kids escaping from a little burglary or something. Even though Jonathan's wife looks me in the eye after the funeral and... This does not happen often in France. No, but... I have the feeling, Monsieur Ripley, that he was killed on purpose. I have the feeling, as her blue eyes stare very directly into mine, that she believes I know whose purpose. But what do I know? Only what Reeves tells me. The bodyguard died. I heard it from one of my friends in Hamburg. A usually reliable friend. If he's dead, how could the Italians be as close to Tom Ripley as Gautier of Fontainebleau? But the story of the bodyguard's death might be just the sort of yarn they'd put about to cover up what information they have, including what they've gleaned from poor old... Poor old Fritz. He got beaten up, lost a couple of teeth, poor guy. So where does that leave our friend? Fritz never knew him as anyone but Paul. Plus, he gave them an opposite description. I wake the next morning, dreaming of Gautier's glass eyes staring into mine. And then, this isn't the first strange call. Hello? Bonjour, monsieur. Comment vous appelez-vous? Vous voulez parler avec qui? Monsieur Anquetin. Non, il n'est pas ici. Maybe Swiss French. Maybe Italian with a passable French. 
Perhaps I shouldn't answer. Or answer in a different way. Uh, hello? Oh, oh, hello, Jonathan. I'd like to see you, um, if you've got some time. She saw what? She saw the bank book. She thinks I impersonated someone to get an inheritance. Or something, something immoral. We'll have to think of a better reason for the money. She suggested nearly everything I might have done short of murder. And have you thought of telling her the truth? I have. It'd be too much. Something she couldn't forgive. You know, a sin. Taking human life and all that. <laughs> human? The mafia? The thing is, it's almost like my whole marriage. I mean, it's as if my marriage itself was at stake. How about a bet? One doctor has bet another in Germany about your recovery. And you hold it in trust. Maybe. Uh, another beer? Well, maybe we should take a drive. Probably no one can understand a word we're saying in the bar. Still, it's a relief to be in the quiet of the car, with his marriage at stake and his surprising solicitude. He should tell his wife. You feel all right yourself? Nothing to worry about? I'm the worrying type. You'd never think so, would you? I try to think of the worst before it happens. I'm sorry about asking to see you today. It's Simone. It's, it's the first time I've ever tried to deceive her about anything, you see? And you were a help. Thanks. It's all right this time, seeing each other, I mean. There's something I need to tell you. Look, Jonathan, you've still got the gun, haven't you, from Hamburg? Well hidden. Make sure you have ammunition. But why? Reeves' flat in Hamburg was bombed around the middle of August. His flat? Good God, was he injured? No, no, he, he's fine. But they've beaten up Fritz as well. Fritz? You don't suppose they know my address? Our addresses or anything? Fritz gave them an opposite description of you. Don't worry. They had addresses that had been already. But? But? There's something else. A telephone call today that bothered me. A man who sounded French, but maybe wasn't. But how could they get your number? Well, I'm toying with the possibility that the Mafia boys might have traced Reeves to Amsterdam. Because for one thing, he's having his housekeeper send his possessions there. The Giannotti family could have checked the phone calls you made. He didn't ring you from there. The last call I had was from Hamburg. It dropped me anywhere here. Well, take it easy. If you're seriously alarmed about anything, call me. I mean that. Or if I can be of help, do the same. Right. Just outside Belle Ombre, a little later, a big, dark blue Citroën cruises past. Plane ends in 75. Paris. Two people in it. Madame Manette says a stranger called around 6.30. Has she used my name in answering? No, no, seulement qu'il a... You can rely on Madame Manette. I don't know why I'm still on edge. Tom? You are very quiet. Is there something? I have, um... My darling, I have a feeling something is going to happen, and I don't want you here. But, Tom... It's a matter of your safety. Also, I would, I would like Madame Annette to leave tomorrow for a few days, so... I hope, darling, you can help me persuade her to visit her sister. What is happening? That is awful. Tom, you must tell me. No. Maybe I'm only anxious, but there's no harm in playing safe, is there? It's something with Reeves. You're trying to protect Reeves, aren't you? I want to protect you and <gasps> us and Belle Arme. What do you mean? I don't want any disturbance here. I don't want anything broken, not a pane of glass, nothing violent or dangerous to happen. You must trust me. All right, Tom. 
It's when I'm saying goodbye to Elwaz and Madame Annette, who thinks Monsieur Tom needs a few days to himself to paint, Bonjour, that the postman arrives with a letter from Reeves. Merci, monsieur. Au revoir, chérie. Au revoir. Oh, and don't forget. 7.30, I will call. I am in Ascona. Had to leave Amsterdam because of a near thing in my hotel. God, I wish they would lay off. I am here in this pretty town known as Ralph Platt, staying at an inn up the hill called De Dry Baron. The Three Bears. I call Jonathan and tell him to bring the gun. Me, I have a Luger Reeves once got me. I hope Jonathan is up to this. I told Simone about the bet on my life. It didn't go down too well. What did she say? <clears throat> Doesn't believe me. And since she saw me with you, she's thinking I'm holding some money for you in my name. She keeps on about doing wrong, sin. So what have you told her now? I left her a note. Won't be home for lunch or dinner. Chance of a job some distance away. That's Belon, the tower above the poplars. What a beautiful place. Wedding present for my wife's parents, mainly. I certainly don't want it to go up in smoke. What a view. I think we'll pull the drapes almost closed, eh? Look. I got this out. If they throw a bomb, then the rifle will be the thing to use. But surely there'd need to be one of us on either side of the house. Maybe better if we're downstairs. More likely they'll try some subterfuge to get in in person. You going to answer that? Could be them again. Where? Well, Monsieur Ripley, this is Madame Trevani. My husband, is he there with you? Your husband? No, he's not here, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. For lying. Look, are you sure you're okay? You sure you don't want to go back and... No. No. Let's go downstairs and get some food inside you. You're not on some kind of special diet or anything? Uh, lots of iron. Otherwise, just a uh, normal diet. I've been thinking. I definitely don't want to use a gun if I can avoid it. Because of the noise. Jonathan. Yes? You might have to wield this rifle like a club. Try it. this? Shh. What's wrong? Is there, some, is there something out there? That's the second time that Citroen's gone by. If they stop, I have a feeling someone might shoot me if I open the door. Sorry. I'm not used to discussing plans. I usually play it by ear. But if you're willing... Surely. Would you hide yourself in the shrubbery by the door? It's thicker over there. And hit anyone who walks up and rings the doorbell. Well, how about if I stay inside and open the door? If they know what you look like, they'll see I'm not you. No, right? no, no. That's how, how brave of you to offer, though. But let's just stick with my plan, okay? Okay. Taking him a blanket. The ground must be damp. Can't see him among the cypress bushes. What more can I do? He's so pale. What's that? Did it stop? Yes, it's reversing. Are you on alert, Jonathan? We should have our guns ready. Not a bomb thrower. Such polite steps.
Kiev. Nice work. Help me drag him inside, would you? It's the same. Yes, bodyguard. You make sure he's out. If you pull him into the living room. I'll make sure we're not disturbed. <laughs> yeah, next one might not be so easy. Shh. Another one. Guns out this time. Wanna laugh? Don't laugh, Tom. Jonathan looks alarmed. Don't use the gun unless you have to. Be the butler, you know what I mean? Who is it, please? Whom did you wish to speak to, sir? Open up, I'll jump. Sir, in what way can I be of assistance? La pistola, por favore. Ripley! Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Drop the gun. Now. Door, if you would, butler. By all means, sir. Anji. Anji e moto. And so will you be if you don't do what I say. Name. Lipo. Lipo. Filippo. Lipo. Okay, keep your hands up and don't move. Yeah. Cover him. John, I want to go look at the car. Can they have possibly sent only two men? There's no sign of anyone else in the car or out of it. Quiet evening in Ville, Paris, except for a couple of mafia hoodlums. Well, one now, the sidekick. I dare say he's tortured a few people in his time for information. Brazen eyes. They'll soon be pleading. He's been very quiet. You're all right, Jonathan? Fine, fine. Now, Lippo. <sighs> Let's see if your friend has anything I might want to use. Hmm? A garrot. For you, Lippo, if you're not a good boy now. You are of the distinguished Gennato family. Non è vero, Lippo? Si. Lippo, you're going to telephone your boss tonight, OK? Where is he? Milano? Monaco de Bavaria? Sign it, please! Poor you. This is what killed Ange, you know? Gosh! So, Jonathan, would you like to find us something soothing on the radio? Hmm? <laughs> Isn't this dreary? He won't tell me where his boss is, so yes. That's just right. Thank you. Um, so, I've got to hit him a little. Oh, no, 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 let's get out of here. Your boss's number. Milano, 747. Here, write it down. Scrive, prende nota. A call. Tom. Listen, it's going to... It's gone by. Lippo, il numero, per favore. The French have a little earpiece they use to augment the sound on the telephone. I listen in while Lippo tells his boss that he's seen Tom Ripley, and that Anji says he's not the man they're looking for. Of course, Lippo wears a pretty little necklace to help him decide what to say. Shape of a garrot. When he's done... Jonathan, you might like to uh, get us a little something to eat. Sorry? This has to be finished. Oh, yes. How long it takes, the cord disappears into his flesh. What a pleasant task. What the heck is that? Tom, it's a taxi. I think it's Simone. John! John! I know you're in there! Jonathan, keep her outside while I call another taxi, okay? Tell her we're talking business with a couple of other people. Okay, I'll try. As soon as he says that, I know when the door opens. She'll push through, and he'll be physically stronger than her. Yet he'll give way. John! Oh, my God! What's going on? Don't look at them. 
These... These men, madame, were invading the house. They're unconscious. We had a bit of trouble. Jonathan, take Simone into the kitchen. They look dead. Jonathan, are you a murderer? I cannot believe that it is you here. Jonathan, can Simone take uh, some brandy, do you think? Yes. We'll go into the kitchen. Simone... I'm not going anywhere until you explain what ma is... Ma ma madame, I, look, I realize this is dreadful. These men are mafia, Italians. They came to the house to attack us. Well, me, anyway. Jonathan helped me, for which I'm very grateful. Without him, I don't know if Without I... Without him? Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Je vous demande qu'est-ce que se passe I'm sorry. I have never been able to tell her to stop to... Look, we've got six hours work ahead, or I have. I'm going to take these two away and dispose of them. I prefer to be back by dawn or before. Are you really willing to help? I am willing, yes. Good. I'm going to slip these sedatives into her brandy and try and calm her, okay? Get her to drink it, can you? Come on. Before we get to work. Cheers, eh? Sante. Sante. I, I am not drinking with you until you explain. Madam, shall I ring for a taxi and take you back to Fontainebleau? I will not leave my husband. I want to know what he is doing here with... avec... avec cochonnerie comme vous. So, um, it really is best if you go back to our house. Please, calm down. Have your brandy. Will you come with me? I... I can't. Uh, then you don't want to. You are on his side. Madam, we must leave. I must tell you there is some danger if you stay in this house. I simply don't know if more of these people won't turn up. We have to get rid of them. Simone, drink. We can't stay and argue. Shall I telephone for a taxi? You think I can forgive you for this? All right, then. Call the taxi. Yes. How pale he is. Exhausted. He doesn't believe she'll come round. Nor do I. But at least she took the taxi home. And now we've driven half across France, half the night. Him in my car and me and the Italians with their bodies in the trunk. We stop at a gas station in the middle of nowhere to fill up and buy the can. Then... We drive on till we find a place. I cover the bodies and the upholstery with gas. Do you want me to come out and help? No, no. Pass me the matches, will you? No. Surely you're not just going to toss a bare flame into a... Tom! Tom, are you all right? Did you see? Did you see how it flared out? Get in. Someone might come. He's half asleep almost as soon as I drive us away. I just want to watch the flames. Can you see it from here, Jonathan? A flash, yes. There. Look. They'll burn. We're in the clear. I don't think another family got Lippo and Anji. I hope. Jonathan? Put your head back, Jonathan. No need to stay awake. Feeling all right? Soon be back home. At the harpsichord. Bach. The thing about Bach is, he's instantly civilizing. Such exhilaration, it's got the better of me. When Jonathan comes in from trying to snatch some sleep, I see straight away it's more than exhaustion he's feeling. Tom? Hi. Jonathan? Do you need a brandy? Have you got any pills you take? I'm afraid. What? I'm afraid I'd better get to the hospital. Sure, right away. One... One thing. Could you, could you bring Simone? At the hospital, they remember him and seem to have everything in hand straight away. But his wife, 
isn't at home. Sunday morning, church or at the market, then I see her approaching with little Georges in a shopping basket under her arm. Her expression does not soften when she sees me. Uh, Madame, I, I wanted to bring you news of your husband. Bonjour, George. George, va-t'en un moment. Madame, if I could just speak with you inside your house. What is your news of my husband? He's in the hospital. A transfusion, I think. I do not understand what you have done with him. Madame, I have only... Thank you for the information, monsieur. Au revoir. George, George. Madame, please. I can't leave it like that. For Jonathan's sake. Can I? Once I know he's on his feet after treatment, I try again. The flowers this time. Yellow forest dahlias. Madame, good day. Uh, perhaps I can speak with you. Jonathan is not here. What do you want? No! I get a foot no. in the door, though. I'm then in the living room. I must... Um, explain last night. That's why I'm here, madame. You mean you think you can explain? As much as anyone can explain the Mafia. I want you to explain why my husband is in your power. He, he is not. How you are blackmailing him. I, I am not, madame, blackmailing Jonathan. He is not in my power and never was. And I think now the job is finished. The... What, what job? I was, um... I was on the train returning from Hamburg, and your husband happened to be on the same train returning from the doctors, I understand. Some special treatment. And this was a job? This train journey? In a way, I do sometimes, madame, take the law into my own hands, as the Mafia do. But I don't blackmail honest people. And on this train, as your job... I killed one of these beasts, these Mafia beasts, on the train. Jonathan was there. He saw me. I had time to explain the situation to him, and he kept a lookout for me, you see? Madame Trevani, it was for a good cause. Oh. I, it was entirely my fault that some time later, Jonathan was at my house, because I asked him if he would be willing to help me again. For money, of course. No, no, madame, out of kindness. Kindness and courage. Very recently, monsieur. My husband has received much money. Are you saying this has nothing to do with you? Ah, yes. He told me. The German doctors are using experimental drugs on him, so they have made a bet together that... Jo Jonathan has told me this, this story. And the death of Monsieur Gauthier. What do you know about that? I know he was killed by a hit-and-run driver. This is what you know, is it? I know that it was an accident. Oh. I trust you will not have need of Jonathan again. I won't call on him, even if I do. I would think next time, Monsieur Ripley, the people to call on are the police, don't you agree? Or perhaps you are already in the secret police of America and not a common criminal. Yes, yes, I've killed people. But that's been to protect others as much as me. To protect Reeves this time. They're watching the hotel, disguised as locals. I may come to Paris. Don't do that, Reeves. Don't. I wonder if I could see you. It's Simone. Jonathan, it's over. The Mafia job, you must attend to your own marriage. She won't. Or perhaps it isn't over. For on my next call to Reeves, a stranger answers. Yeah, I got it. Monsieur Reeves n'est pas ici maintenant. Reeves is his first name, and who the hell are you? I don't ask. I call Jonathan, who, it turns out, has been trying to reach me. I meet him outside his shop. I'm finished, Jonathan. I'm finished. With Simone. Or she is with me. Or perhaps it's she... It's the money. The deaths. Yeah. Murders. Perhaps she'll come around. Then there's the old business of how long will I live anyway. Why well, drag it on? So, Tom, if I can be of service, I'm at your disposal. I place my hand on his shoulder, then let go. We walk together in a companionable silence for a while. He wants to go for a drink. I want to make sure his family are all right. 
But he's in such a state, I don't know how to tell him about the man in Reeves' room. So I don't. Didn't you once say the Mafia might want a certain amount of blood as revenge? If we do nothing, they may get Reeves and finish him. This is called letting nature take its course. Look, Jonathan, you've got to go home tonight and face the music. I know. I'll come with you if you like. Try to talk with her again. I think I'll be sleeping on the Chesterfield tonight, whatever happens. Perhaps you think it'll make it worse if I'm with you? All right, well, thanks. I'd like you to come. It doesn't go well, but at least there seems to be no strange cars in the street. Nobody watching the house. I take my punishment. I don't get beyond the door from the hall. You are telling me that this sordid monarch comes from a bed between doctors. This is absurd. He has become a criminal, thanks perhaps to your charming influence. They're not kindly do not sit down, but leave my house. Madame. No. Jonathan came to see me tonight because he was most upset. Marriage is a, is a sacred thing to him. You know that well, and his life his courage would be destroyed if he lost your affection. I'm sorry, well, but... Continue your lecture. No, listen! Expecting someone? No. Jonathan, bolt the door. Ask who it is. Qui est, s'il vous plaît? Monsieur Provani. Now what? What are you doing? You, you keep tools in here? Yes, but what do you think? Now look, I have a garage, but a hammer will be... Jonathan, what? What, what are you doing? Oh, 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 oh. I opened the door. Still, it's open now. Must be two of them. This one has hold of Simone, but not for long. Can you, can you get him in the cupboard with me? Oh. There. <laughs> The other one is happily garroting Jonathan. Sees me coming and goes for his gun. Too slow for the hammer. The third hammer blow might finish him. But there's already blood on the carpet. Tom, he's still alive. Please stop hitting him! Are you sure you got your breath back? Sure. But why do we need well, these? There may be one, two more in the car. We wear their friends' hats, then if only for a moment... Well, look like them. I'm with you. Are you sure you're... Fine, I'm fine. Look, we need to fire simultaneously, either side of the car. On three, you go left, me right. Then we each count to five before we turn and shoot and keep shooting, okay? Okay. Three, two, one. Hell. Jonathan. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Jonathan! They shot him. Jonathan! Ambulance! Ambulance! My car would be quicker, I thought. Simone cradles him in the corner of the back seat. And am I dreaming that Reeves is here too, looking the worst for wear? Madame, hold this against him. Reeves, what the hell? Jonathan. Jonathan is. Jonathan is... Jonathan. The silence between all of us in the car becomes eerie. No! I told them his name. I almost got to you, didn't I, Tom? To warn you. I told them his name. Reeves, here. Have some more whiskey. They would caught me by surprise. Kept asking me questions. Who was on the train? Giving me cigarette burns. Then pretending to suffocate me. I couldn't breathe. They didn't mention my name? No. You see, you killed... Two of them here? In the house? And two at Jonathan's. 
with the two who drove off, did they recognize me? Mm. I don't know if they're going to be satisfied by getting Jonathan tonight or not. Jonathan didn't need to come out to the car with me. I don't think I'm mistaken. We were supposed to stay either side of the car. Instead, he deliberately took my bullet, stepped between me and the pointing gun. So, Tom, if I can be of service, I'm at your disposal. It's two months now since he died. Best not to show up at the funeral, I thought. Two months and no visits from the Italians, nor from the police. You really must take lessons on the harpsichord. I was in Fontainebleau. Someone told me a woman who lived over Gautier's shop gave piano lessons. Simone must have decided to say nothing and take Jonathan's money. Otherwise, I'd have heard from the police. They say in the shops that Simone and the child have moved away to Toulouse or somewhere. So, it's like seeing a ghost. There she is, coming along the street. Good day, madame. I am... Monsieur Ripley. Her spit missed me entirely. It's a kind of guarantee, isn't it? If she hadn't decided to hang on to the money, she wouldn't have bothered spitting and I would be in prison. She's just a trifle ashamed of herself then, like much of the rest of the world. Probably her conscience is more at rest than Jonathan's would be, if he was still alive. In Ripley's Game, Tom Ripley was played by Ian Hart, Elwaz was played by Helen Longworth, Madame Annette by Caroline Guthrie, Reeves Minot by Paul Ryder, Jonathan Trevani by Tom Brooke, Simone Trevani by Janice Aqua, Gautier by Philip Fox, Mafia Man by Matt Addis, and Lipo by Sam Dale. Ripley's Game was written by Patricia Highsmith and dramatized by Alan MacDonald. The director was Stephen Canney. And the complete Ripley season continues at the same time, half past two next Saturday, with The Boy Who Followed Ripley.